Happy springtime, YouTube. Thanks for joining me in today's unboxing video. I knew this year I had to purchase a new lawnmower, so I've been doing quite a bit of research and ended up selecting this new 2022 Toro Super Recycler with the Vortex technology. Now, I didn't see any YouTube videos on this new 2022 model, so I figured I'd give you a quick unboxing and my first impressions after my first mow. So this one is model 21565. It has the personal pace, auto drive system, smart stow, updated tires, the new cast aluminum deck with the Vortex technology. Uh, that Vortex technology comes standard on the 22 inch recycler models. Uh, I picked this one up at Home Depot for $649. Wanted to buy it at my local Toro dealers, but none of them were able to get this new model in this year. In fact, they said, they weren't even sure it was going to be shipping due to the supply chain shortages. This model, the 21565, doesn't include the electric start or the blade spin stop. There are a couple models that do include that, but let's go ahead and open the box and take a look at what's included. Now, getting into the box, there's not a ton that you'll have to unpack and just a few things you'll have to go through. The first thing that's included is the operator manual and quick start guide that now comes standard but you can also download the PDF version on the Toro website I'll have a link to that down in the video description it also comes with SAE 30 engine oil which is pretty nice all you have to do is pour the whole bottle in to get started so we'll go ahead and do that here in a little bit you've got the Toro bag that comes standard it's all black now pretty nice looking says super recycler up at the top we're gonna go ahead and get this all put together and fit it on I'm gonna be bagging today I've got a lot of yard debris that I want to pick up so Let's go ahead and get this thing out of its box and set up and take a closer look at everything. So this is the new 2022 Toro Super Recycler model 21565. It's got that matte black aluminum deck, the smart stow, personal pace system, that Darth Vader looking vortex intake. There's a couple other little updates as well. I think the wheels are different. They have ball bearings now, but let's go ahead and take a little closer look at everything. So setting up the handles for the first time is pretty easy. You'll simply need to remove the fasteners on each side. That's going to allow the handles to slide into place. You can see the hole fitting here will go over the screw head and we can then resecure those fasteners. Here's the hole where the smart stow locks will clip into place and allows a little bit of flexibility as the handles bounce up and down. But well, we're gonna go ahead and get the handles flipped up out of the smart stow position. So simply unlock each of the smart stow clips on the sides. We're gonna then be able to pull the handlebar directly up and then relock it into place. You can hear a clicking sound when we snap the the smart stow clips back into place. Now your handlebars will be in position and you are all set to mow. The new Super Recycler models include the Vortex air intake system. This comes standard on the 22 inch recycler models and they're claiming with this Vortex system that it'll pull more air into the cutting chamber, which creates more airflow around the blades, allowing it to mince the grass into ultra fine mulch. So we'll see how that works and put it to the test. If we look down at the front, you can see the Vortex grate. That's supposed to pull the air under the deck. It'll even stand the grass up closer to the blades and the cutting surface. So again, we'll evaluate that after our first mow today. The new Super Recycler models now come with an updated wheel design that's standard on the 22 inch recycler models. It's got a new rubber pattern design, has sealed ball bearings that are supposed to aid in better grip and help navigate rough terrain. I've got a pretty uneven backyard, so I'll definitely be putting this to the test. The back tires on these new models are a bit taller than the front wheels, and all wheels are apparently wider than on previous Super Recycler models. Each one of the tires can be individually adjusted using the adjustments on each side. Simply pull the adjuster to move the cutting height. They're fairly easy to adjust, but annoyingly no longer show the letters on the height adjustment, making height adjustment just a bit more cumbersome than it used to be. This updated model comes with the guaranteed to start Briggs & Stratton 163cc engine. In speaking with my local Toro dealers, they said this engine should be fairly identical to what was provided on last year's model. I did read some reviews online about the Briggs & Stratton engines on the previous models that were sputtering while mowing, so I'll keep you updated on any issues I see with this engine. Over here on the left hand side, we have the Briggs & Stratton air filter system. It seems very standard and easy to clean, so I'll keep you updated on that. Over here on the right side, we have the engine oil reservoir. Again, it came with some SAE 30 engine oil that we'll add in. And then back on the left hand side, we have the gas chamber, which is fairly large, but could be a bit wider. It's not quite as large as some of the Honda mowers that I was looking at, but it should be just fine. So I'll get this gassed up here in a minute and then we'll take it out for our first mow. 
One thing I wanted to mention that I read in some of the online reviews about the previous models is that the spark plug may not always be completely attached, and people thought that this might be contributing to some of the engine sputtering problems, and sure enough, when I checked and pressed on mine, the spark plug did click into place, so mine wasn't fully attached. Just something to keep in mind when you pick yours up, make sure you go ahead and push on that spark plug to ensure it's fully attached. On the rear is our bagging door, so if you open this up, you'll see that there is a mulching plug that's included. You'll have to take this in and out when switching between mulching and bagging. I'm gonna be bagging today in this test. As I mentioned, I have a lot of yard debris I wanna pick up, so I'll remember to put this back in when I'm going back to mulching. Now, it's not quite as easy as the 22-inch recycler model that has the lever that slides back and forth and closes the mulching door, so you're gonna have to remember to put that plug back in every time you wanna go back to mulching. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the bag because that's the test that I'm gonna be doing today for us. Attaching the bag is pretty straightforward. Open the rear bagging door and there will be a metal groove on each side that the bag slides into. Simply align the metal wings on the bag and slide them into the groove and that will lock the bag into place. I wanted to show you how easy it is to put the mower in the smart stow position. On the handles, you're gonna unlock the clips, fold the handle down, and then lock the clips back into place. You'll hear a clicking sound when they're secure. Then you're gonna simply pull up on the handle to expose the underside of the mower, and that is in the smart stow position. I absolutely love the smart stow on this model. Once it's into the smart stow position, you can see the underside of the cast aluminum deck. And what makes this a super recycler is the inclusion of the under deck bumpers that help push the grass back into the blades for finer mulching. This is that new vortex chamber that pulls the air into the underside of the deck. You also have the accelerator blades that aid in mulching that are standard on all super recycler models. Just like on previous models, we have the flex handle suspension system. This is a little rubber piece on each side that the handle rests on that allows the handle to bounce up and down as you go over bumps and holes in your lawn. It's a nice addition that provides a bit more comfort in your mowing experience. You can see the handle bouncing up and down, so we'll see if this adds any comfort to my mowing experience. So let's get some gas and oil into this thing and take it out for our very first mow. So here are the results after my second cut when I was mulching. It did a pretty good job. I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, there's a few blades of grass standing up in the yard, but overall it did a great job of recycling that mulch back into the yard. Bagging it did a really good job as well. I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary, but overall the cut quality is great and I am very satisfied with the initial results. So I finished my first couple of mows. I did one with the bag and I did one mulching. I wanted to experience both before I gave you my first impressions. And overall, I thought the cut quality on both was really, really good, but I absolutely loved this personal pace system. I'll be honest, I've never used this before. I borrowed my neighbor's Honda that had the variable speed control lever. Uh, that Honda system worked pretty well, but I really enjoyed the personal pace. I could just push the mower at my own speed. It made it a really enjoyable experience. On the first mow, I was using a bag because I had a lot of leaves and sticks from the winter to pick up, so it seemed to work pretty well and picked up that yard debris with no problem. One thing I did notice is that some of the clippings would get stuck on the entry of the bag, so it wouldn't always necessarily fill the bag all the way up, but for the most part, it did a pretty darn good job. After all, it is a super recycler and it's known for its mulching capabilities. Like I said before, it cut really well, both bagging and mulching. There weren't many blades sticking up from what I could see, and the mulch clippings were pretty fine and hard to find in the lawn afterwards. A couple of things I did want to point out, one being about the wheels. So some online reviews mentioned this about previous Super Recycler models, but 
I did notice that when you're setting the height adjustments, they no longer provide the individual letters on the adjustments. It's completely blank, which makes it a little bit more difficult to quickly adjust the height. It's the same on the front and the back, as you can see here, so that is kind of annoying. Another annoying thing that I read about online, but it didn't really affect my mowing experience, is that when all of the wheels are set to the same height at maximum height, for whatever reason, the front left wheel is able to spin freely, so it's sort of uneven. You can see how it spins freely here on the flat part of my driveway, and even in my level garage, that front wheel would spin freely a bit. However, when I put it at its lowest settings, that seemed to fix the issue just fine, but it's something I wanted to point out to everybody that is a little bit annoying. The only other thing that I noticed was that when I was bagging, it would leave some clippings on the inside of the chute. So when I would take the bag off and remove it to empty it, there were a few clippings that were stuck here in the chute and they would fall out onto the lawn. I'd have to back up and mow them over. It's not really a big deal, but it's something to keep in mind. One thing I am going to point out is that I do use a lawn striping system from Toro. If you haven't used one before, I highly recommend it. It really does take your lawn to the next level in terms of looks. Overall, I really enjoy the new design. The personal pace system was great to use. The cut quality was wonderful and it started up on its first pull and the first pull every time after when I was emptying the bag. Again, I don't have the blade spin stop system, but it is available on another model, but they wanted an additional 200 bucks for that system, so I decided to pass. But it was a very enjoyable first couple of mows. I will primarily be mulching moving forward, but if anyone has any thoughts or questions, leave those down in the comments. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.